Hey guys, Michael here with another video and I'm coming to you guys with a fun one today. This is what's in my flight bag or in reality what every pilot should have in their flight bag. Now I'm a CFI double I here in New Jersey so my flight bag is going to be mission based. It's going to be based off of my mission. It requires me to go in and out of planes but I do believe everything in my flight bag is essential for any pilot wherever stays in your journey to have in their flight bag. Now before I was a flight instructor I was a consultant. I was traveling up and down the United States across. I was traveling. I was packing my bags based off of the mission and the purpose. So I think that's what really plays a role in why I like packing so much and I think I like packing in small packages something that's versatile something that I can go in and out of planes with and I think you'll find that benefit as well all right here it is this is my flight bag so I've been rocking this bag for about a year now and I think it is exceptional it's very small so a lot of you guys are probably watching this and thinking, Michael, why is your flight bag so small? Well, I'm about to show you that it holds a ton of things. And again, every single thing in here, I believe that every pilot should have as an essential item in their flight bag. And I think that really speaks to the uh, compactness of this flight bag and why I chose it. It was about 20 something dollars on Amazon, very cheap. It wasn't really made to be a flight bag, but I think those are some of the best flight bags because even though it wasn't made to be a flight for a flight bag, it was made to be a general bag. And you can see because of that, it's nice and stylish. At the same time, it's nice and discreet. It's very small and I can just sling it over my body very easily, jump into a plane. So let's talk about some of the items that are inside this flight bag. All right, cool. So I'm gonna unpackage it and I'm going to have everything that I pull out of the bag separately on screen so that you guys can see. But the first things first, I have my Bose headset, right? Everybody has a nice headset um, along inside their flight bag. Everybody should have their headset. I, I think I wanted to get this out of the way first because everybody knows that I'm gonna have a Bose headset or, or a headset in my flight bag. Why did I choose the Bose? I chose the Bose because of the well-rounded recommendations. I think the durability is amazing. I've been rocking these Bose for about seven years now. And then also what a lot of people, what a lot of you new students don't know is something called the TSO certification. Now I don't know much about it, but I do know that it is a grade of durability, right? So just like your phone may have an IP67 rating, the headsets do have a TSO certification, um, the Bose um, specifically, um, stating uh, their durability assessment, right? So they go through a lot of different tests from what I understand, uh, negative temperatures, positive temperatures. Now, obviously your headset's never gonna go through those conditions. However, it's good on a nice, hot, sunny day when you put your headsets on the dashboard of the plane, you know it's not gonna melt. That being said, the TSO certification is required for a lot of headsets in a lot of aviation operations. So this will very likely last me my entire career throughout every stage of my career. And that's what I was looking for in a headset. Now, I'm not sure if I can say that about any other aviation headset. However, these ones, again, noise canceling, and that's huge for pilots. As a pilot, you should know that because of the pressure changes, our hearing is one of the first things to go. So why not protect it as much as you can with a nice noise canceling headset early on in your training so that you can make sure that you're protecting your training throughout your aviation journey. After that, I have a nice pair of sunglasses. Now I have these in a nice sunglasses case. Um, the reality is as a pilot, again, uh, just like you're hearing, you need your eyes, right? We wanna make sure that our eyes are nice and protected. It's in its nice case here and just generic sunglasses. I didn't get anything uh, really special. Uh, these are polarized sunglasses. Now, a lot of aviators will know that you'll probably want non-polarized sunglasses, but I got the polarized sunglasses because they're better for your eyes. And the thing is for the Cessnas that I do fly, they do not disturb any of my visibility on the electronics. Um, now, if you're flying a different or bigger aircraft with a different avionics set, maybe non-polarized sunglasses might be the way to go. But I find these are durable. They're a nice cheap set of sunglasses that have lasted me very long so far and they're right in the bag for me to pull out whenever I need. After that, what's essential for night flying, right? So we always wanna have a headlamp in our bag because the thing is, we never know when we can go into night flying. Let's say that we flew somewhere and we're coming back late and then the sun is setting incredibly fast. You know that it's going to transition very quickly into night flying. And if you're not well equipped, you could be caught 
in a cockpit, maybe your lights, the dashboard panel lights are not working, you wanna make sure that you have one on standby. Again, this is just a generic headlamp that I got, I believe from Dick's Sporting Goods. It's always good to have one on board in your flight bag just to make sure that you can see all of your electronics, let's say anything goes out. And then also, when you get out of the aircraft, you wanna be able to see everything that's outside, see looking at the aircraft. So that's why, initially on this headlamp, when you press on the top button, it's a red light. Now, this is in crucial, right? Because as you guys know, once you start doing night flying, you know that red lights are crucial for being able to preserve your night vision in the nighttime. Now, I wanted a headlamp that immediately as I pressed on the button for the first time, it defaulted to red. That's exactly what you should search for in a headlamp. Now, when you hold down on the top, it will shine white, right? So when I'm outside walking around the aircraft, doing my pre-flight, you want a white light because a white light simulates the conditions that you would see in the daytime, right? You want your eyes to be a little bit normalized to what you'd be looking for in a normal pre-flight. So that's the cool thing about this headlamp, right? The first button push, red, and then you hold for the white light. You wanna make sure that you have that in place. Next, after that, I have a backup headlamp. Now I know you're probably like, does that really make sense? Is that really necessary? Well, the reason why I got a backup is because I don't know who I'm gonna be flying with, right? And let's say I'm flying with a student. Let's say I'm flying with another pilot. Even if they're not the pilot in command, it's always good to have someone else looking at the avionics, looking at the engine instruments. You want another set of eyes. Now, if I'm the only one who has a headlamp and I'm the only one who's looking in one direction, the other person may not be able to back me up. So I do believe that I should have two, one for uh, my primary and another for a backup so that I can share if I'm flying with another person. All right, next up inside the flight bag is a multi-tool. Now, this comes in handy. A lot of people are like, huh, a multi-tool with a knife. You know, we have a nice knife. Uh, we have a screwdriver set inside that I can plug away. So in the front compartment of my flight bag, I have the screwdriver set. So I'll bring that out here and take you guys a look. Right, so it comes with a nice bit set, right, that I can run any type of screwdriver bit that I need, and I think that's incredible to have. Here's why. You never know when you're gonna be stranded. You never know when you might need to do some maintenance on your aircraft. Now make sure that it's within the guidelines of pilot repairs that you can do, as per the FAR AIM, but still, it provides a nice utility set for anything that I might need, cutters, uh, tweezers, um, clamps, a knife, a screwdriver set, anything that I may need on the go. And I've already used it, right, to screw in different panels that I see that may be sticking out, something that may need to tighten. Our aircraft are going through a lot, especially as a flight instructor. A lot of students are taking the planes up and down each day. It's really nice if I have this handy just in case. All right, next up is one of the most essential things, a backup radio. Now this backup radio I got because I had a, an issue. So uh, this is basically a purchase out of experience. Now I was flying along one night in a Mooney and I had an electrical failure. And that's kind of woke me up to say, hey, I need a backup radio. Now we'll talk about that story another time, but the whole point is I realized because of that story that I think it's very, very good to have a backup radio. Now this is the Yesu uh, radio that uh, I believe a lot of the pilot shops sell. Now in the side compartment of my bag, I have the antenna. So whenever I'm ready, I just screw it on. I've also screwed in the side plate that this radio has because that enables me to plug it in to my headsets, whatever headset I'm using. Very recently, I found out that this backup radio has Bluetooth. So what I can do, I can still be connected into the aircraft's intercom, connect via Bluetooth to my Bose headset, and then still use it like a regular radio. So the radio comms, everything like that is going through the Bose headset via Bluetooth. I'm still able to talk to the person in the cockpit via my headset. So in reality, the experience is unchanged from being plugged into a headset. And I think this comes in great handy. Whenever I need it, I know that I have a backup radio in my flight bag. All right, guys, we're not done yet. You saw that small flight bag and you thought there's no way he could fit so many things in there. And we're coming to the next thing here. In the front compartment, I store 
the Sentry, yes. So this is the four flight Sentry. I have the RAM mount separately stored inside the bag and then I have the actual device up front in the forward pouch. This Sentry comes in so much handy, right? I fly in central Jersey. Uh, and that's, if you don't know, New York, New Jersey, the busiest airspace in the world. We have Newark, we got LaGuardia, we have Kennedy Airport. And where I train and do a lot of, a lot of my uh, students' training is right outside the Bravo. So as you can imagine, people are going in and out, fast jets, moving, Pilatuses, King Airs, right above your head. And it is crazy busy. In addition to all the flight training that we try to do, in my practice area, we have about three, four schools that use that same practice area. So not only do we are we in the busiest airspace in the world, we're right next to the exit. We got Philly right down below us. We got all of the practice area going back and forth. This comes in so much handy. Now, if you don't know, ADS-B is a great technology. So you can get the Sentry, you can get any other device that's an ADS-B in device. And the way that it works effectively, your aircraft sends its position to ADS-B towers. And then those towers transmit that location of every aircraft to ADS-B in devices. And you can purchase any of these ADS-B devices. They have a variety of ranges. Plus, you can make your own. I used to sell them. I used to have a store online where I used to build ADS-B devices using a Raspberry Pi. So if you are very uh, inclined to do so, you can build your own for quite a bit cheaper than you can get for the retail models. But I suggest that every aviator has these. Now, I wanna make sure it's very clear. I've been seeing a recent disturbing trend where a lot of students, they'll get distracted by their iPads and they won't be looking outside. So I think it's very important. Whenever I recommend this to people, I like to make sure that they know that not all traffic is required to send ADS-B signals to those towers. So always be sure to look outside and make sure that is your primary mode of finding targets not looking down at an iPad, trying to fixate and figure out where it's coming from. I think this is immense. So what I do, I connect it to my four flight and then I use my four flights to connect to my headsets and then announces all the position of any aircraft that gets close or too far, etc. Now, I'm only gonna talk about this one very briefly, but Apple AirTag, always gotta have one, right? Apple AirTag in case anybody, uh, uh, decides to take this up. So next, um, as everybody should, um, I think this is very minor, backup batteries, right? So I don't think anybody needs an explainer why you need backup batteries. It's good to have for your Bose headset. Then the bag is starting to get incredibly light, but there's a lot more. Now we have a battery pack. So this battery pack, I really love. Now this is called the Omni Charge. Now the Omni Charge was a Kickstarter project that I funded a very long time ago. This was back in high school. I had funded their project and then two years later, they came out with the Omni Charge One. And this is basically a battery bank, about 2200 milliamps. But the cool part is you have a household plug right there, right? So it's a battery bank that will give you a household plug right there. You have um, USB-A ports, you also have USB-C ports and a DC volt port, right? So that opens up the possibilities of charging anything when you have a DC volt port. So I think these are really robust. I've been using them. I bought this. This is my second one that I got. And I put this in the back pouch of my flight bag. Whenever I need a charge, it's always there, especially on those long days as a flight instructor where you have uh, sunrise to sunset flights and your phone starts to go down or your iPad, whatever it may be, this is always coming in handy. Now I wanna keep in mind that any of the items in my flight bag, you can get alternatives. Now, um, just like the battery bank that I just spoke about, you can get another battery bank whenever you'd like. Um, it doesn't have to be that specific one, but all of them get the job done. Now, of course, you know, I have a variety of cables, right, uh, to charge different things um, as I may need. And then as we continue through, I believe this is the last item, but we'll see. All right. So in this little pouch here, I have my license. I also have my medical and I have my passport, right? Um, I always have it just in case. I never know when I might need it. Um, right now, I just got my multi-license about 
back in November, right? I got my multi-license back in November and the FA has yet to send my nice card. So inside here is a printout of that nice temporary certificate. And that's what I'm using in addition to the uh, license that I have for my CFI and double I. And then with the night theme, we have a flashlight, right? So this is a really cool flashlight. Again, it was just a cheap one that I found on Amazon, but it can zoom in and out and it has different colors. So that's the whites. And if you cut it off, it goes to blue, to green, it should. Uh, that's green. And I wanna show you the red one if it's cooperating. There we go, the red one, right? So again, the same theme, you wanna at least have a white and a red light on board with you whenever you're doing night flying. I think this one's great because you can zoom in and out so you can hyper-focus on a specific object and then you can bring it out so that you can see the whole view of a specific area. This shines super bright. I point it up into the sky and it goes straight up, obviously, at, not at other planes, but it you can see the, the ray of light and it shoots out really bright. I don't know if there's a measurement uh, to determine um, it's luminance. I'm not exactly sure the luminance level on this light, but I know that it has come in handy. Now, I think whenever you're picking a light out uh, for your flight bag, get one with a nice clip. I think this clip is really cool. That's right on the bridge of it there. I'm able to clip it onto the sun visor or anything it may be inside the cockpit. So when I'm pre-flighting inside the cockpit, I have a nice ambient light there that I can also utilize. And I believe, guys, that would be it, right? So that is the totality. I mean, of course, Every pilot needs pens. Every pilot needs a good pair of pens. So I have, in this pouch, I have tons of pens in here. I have at least 10 pens inside here um, because I'm always writing on log books, making sure. Now, the reason why uh, you guys may be wondering, why don't you have a log book in here? Because I keep my log book at home in a fireproof safe. I do my log books digitally with my flight book. And then I uh, report those at the end of the day. I just take pictures of the Hobbs times before and after, and I write all of that down in a notes pad. At the end of the day, I port it all over to the log book. So that's it guys, this is the flight bag. This is everything that I have inside my flight bag. Uh, it's a lot of stuff, right? So a lot of people think, wow, how can this fit into such a small flight bag? Well, I'm gonna show you guys right now exactly how I pack everything in. All right guys, let's pack everything in. So basically the way that I do it, I put my lights all the way at the bottom. So all my headlamps, then I'm gonna put my air tag in the little compartment in the center. And there's a center compartment right in the center of the front. There, I'll go ahead and zip that up. I'm gonna go ahead and take my radio, tuck it in nicely in that same compartment in the front there. And then the cables I'm gonna put over to the side, nice and neat. The antenna for the radio, I'm gonna put it into the right side compartment on this side, right? as well as the flashlight. So those two sit together. I'll go ahead and zip that up. Then after that, I'm gonna go ahead and put all my sensitive documents inside the pouch behind, right? So my passport, pilot's license, things of that nature. Then I'm gonna go ahead and put the multi-tool right next to that. For the multi-tool, right, we have these heads, these screw heads. Um, all of them, I'm gonna go ahead and put them in the front compartment with the battery. So that's the last thing that I didn't take out. I have some batteries in the front pouch there. Go ahead, zip that up. Then in the back compartment, I'm gonna put the battery pack. So I'm gonna go ahead and take the battery pack underneath the cables and I'll keep it facing out, right? So the digital screen I want it to be facing out, so I don't even have to take it out of the bag whenever I need it. After that, I'm going to put the um, the cable for the um, the Sentry in the front. I like to coil it up nice and neat. Just got out of hand here, so let's go ahead and do that. All right, it's nice and coiled. I'm gonna go ahead and put that in the front compartment of the flight bag. And then I have the sensory device right beneath that. I'll go ahead and put that up front. Oh, it's all coming together. And then on top of the lights, I like to put the uh, sunglasses. So they sit right snug there. And the sunglasses act as like a nice pad for the headset. 
So put that right there and I'll put the custom cabling right in front of it, nice and snug, right between the headset, very similar to the Bose. And then last but not least, we're gonna take the custom mount for the Sentry and we're gonna put it right behind the headset, right in between the pads there. And we'll zip this right up. There it is. Full flight bag, all packaged up, ready to just be slung around my back. If you guys have any questions, suggestions, or anything else that you guys think that I should add to my flight bag, feel free to leave them down below. If you guys want to see more of my content, feel free to subscribe. We're growing every single day. Like this video if it helped you out. And until next time, you guys have great flights, blue skies, tailwinds, and I'll see you in the next one.